up there. Next thing we want to talk about, and this is probably the most often asked question and one of the most important things in a surround sound system for good sound. This question is, where do I put the subwoofer? How do I locate the subwoofer in the room for the best sound? Good question. Good question. Part of the answer for this question is going to be your sixth grade arithmetic teacher. You didn't think that you were going to need your sixth grade arithmetic ever again, but you were wrong. Mrs. Wright, who taught you in sixth grade and taught you all about multiples and greatest common denominator and your multiplication tables, all that's coming back to haunt you now because what I'm going to tell you is going to employ some very, very advanced sixth grade 12 year old mathematics. So if you can't do this on your own, you know, borrow Jimmy's math book when he's not looking after he's gone to sleep and brush up on your elementary school arithmetic. I will use one word that I'd love to use and I never thought I'd get a chance to use this word in normal conversation and that word is asymmetry. Asymmetry is your friend. When you're putting a subwoofer in a room, asymmetry is your friend. And what do I mean by that? I mean that what you want to do with a subwoofer is locate it in a non-symmetrical manner in the room. Now, if I can go to the drawing board and you can bear with my limited artistic ability, once again, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay. Here we have a typical listening room, 16 feet by 24 feet. And if you're going to put the subwoofer along that 24 foot wall, you want to do so asymmetrically so that you don't have common multiples of the wall distance left over when you mount the subwoofer. So here's what you would not want to do. You would not want to mount the subwoofer six, foot, six feet down a 24 foot wall because that will leave you with 18 feet of a 24 foot wall. And according to the advanced mathematics in Mrs. Wright's class, six and 18 are whole number multiples of each other. Six goes into 18, three nice, round, fat, even times. That's not so good as far as subwoofers are concerned because each room dimension corresponds to a base frequency and when you have whole number multiples then they reinforce a certain bass note and direct harmonics of that same bass note. So you can get a buildup of bass resonances around a certain bass note. Not a good thing. Here's a better thing. On that same 24 foot wall, try mounting it, say, five feet down because that'll leave you with 19 feet. Well, that's a lot better because 5 and 19 have nothing to do with each other mathematically. Absolutely nothing. And you'll get a smoother bass sound in the room if you mount the subwoofer in an asymmetrical manner. If you have two subwoofers, two subwoofers are good because you can get twice the power, you get twice the bass into a room, you drive each subwoofer less hard so the subwoofers don't distort as much, it's much better and you have the opportunity to mount the second subwoofer in its own asymmetrical way. So if I could do some fast mental calculations, 16 feet, if I could mount that second subwoofer five feet out, that leaves me with 11 feet. Five and 11 are just as unmathematically related as five and 19. I could even go, say, seven and nine because seven and nine are not mathematically related. So if you can mount two subwoofers in a room and stagger their positions so that they're not symmetrically mirror imaged, if you have two subwoofers you do not want to mount one on one side of the room in exactly the same manner as the other on the other side of the room. That's precisely the wrong thing to do. Although you may intuitively want to do it that way, don't do it that way. Mount them in absolutely staggered, unrelated fashions and you'll get a much smoother, 
much more random distribution of base resonance modes such that no one base resonant mode in the room is going to affect the sound in a particularly bad way. Asymmetry is your friend. So let's take a look at this 102 SB. This is along a 24 foot wall. It's seven feet out. There's whatever to go. It's asymmetrically related. It's a nice placement for a subwoofer. There is one exception to all this, and that's corner placement. Corner placement works really nicely on subwoofers if the subwoofer is designed for it. See, all subwoofers have amplifiers built to them. All subwoofers have equalization built into the amplifiers. And as a manufacturer, no one manufacturer is a mind reader. So I don't know where you're going to put the subwoofer. I don't know if you're going to put that subwoofer 6 and 18 feet out, which is nice, 5, 19 feet out, which is really nice, or whether you're going to do something really horrible with it. So the equalization that's built into a subwoofer is kind of a, an average. It's kind of done so that you're going to mount the subwoofer in the best possible manner and what's called the anechoic or theoretical performance of the subwoofer is maximized because we can't maximize the real world performance because we don't know where you're going to put it in the real world. So the amplification and equalization that's built into a subwoofer is done so so that its theoretical performance is maximized. It's the best that we can do and we hope that you follow good sense guidelines. The exception to that comes with something really ingenious like our 10 CSB corner subwoofer. It's a great subwoofer because not only does it mount in a corner visually out of the way, and I've talked about that before and won't go into that here so much again now, but it, it solves a lot of placement issues in terms of visual integration of a subwoofer into a room. But from an acoustic standpoint, we know where the corner subwoofer is going to go. It's going to go into the corner, and its equalization and electronics and driver are optimized for the corner location. So all this nice recommendation about asymmetry, about five foot and 19 feet down on a 24 foot wall, that applies to a regular box loudspeaker. But for a corner designed loudspeaker, like the 10 CSB, mount that one in the corner because that's where it's designed to go and it's designed to go there we know it's going to go there. We're telling you that it's a corner-mounted subwoofer. Everything works nicely if you mount it in the corner. So basically, corner-mounted sub mounted in the corner. Box sub that's going to go in a room like a normal subwoofer, mount it asymmetrically and you'll maximize the smoothness and maximize the overall satisfaction that you get from a subwoofer in your home theater system. The end. We'll go on to uh, one other chapter. We are rolling. We are rolling. Okay. We are rolling. We are rolling. Okay. One last subject I want to touch upon quickly because I think this will really help everybody in setting up a better system. And that's speaker size selection. The best thing to do, the rule of thumb to follow when you're going through the setup menu and the receiver says, what size speakers are you using? There's a little bit of confusion as to whether you should select large speakers or small speakers, especially if you happen to be using floor standing speakers which are relatively large physically. Should I select large speakers? And the best advice that I can give you, you're free to disagree, but I wouldn't advise it. The best advice I can give you is to always select small. Because when you select small as speaker size, you're not insulting the size of your speakers. You're being smart because you're telling your receiver and your electronics that yes, I'm selecting small as my speaker size and yes as to whether or not I have a subwoofer. So the receiver or processor is then instructed by those setup instructions to gather up all the bass that resides either on the 0.1 LFE channel or all the bass that resides on the LCR and surround channels it gathers it up and it puts it out through the subwoofer output, the 0.1 output, and that's where it goes. It goes where it belongs to the subwoofer. If you select large speakers, yes, and subwoofer, no, then the receiver says, well, wait a second. 
Um, I don't know what to do with all this space. Maybe I should just give it to the left and right speakers. And if the left and right speakers aren't capable of handling the bass, then you don't get as much bass as you should. And if they're fed the LFE bass, they're fed the LFE bass at a lower level then the receiver would send that LFE signal to the subwoofer. You with me on that? If you select subwoofer no, the LFE signal goes to the front speakers, but at a lower level than it would ordinarily if you select subwoofer yes. So when you say speakers large, subwoofer no, you're cheating yourself out of base, so don't do that. If you do have big front speakers and you want them to be able to reproduce some bass on their own and add to the overall bass impact of the system, that's fine. Most modern receivers and modern preamp processors have a choice of crossover frequencies. It used to be 80 hertz or nothing. Now you can go 80 hertz, 100, 120 for small satellite speakers. You can keep the low bass out of small satellite speakers. And on the other end of the spectrum, a lot of times the better receivers and processors allow you to select not only 80 but 60 or 50 or 40 so you can send frequencies as low as 40 Hertz which is pretty deep bass to your front speakers and then everything below 40 in the front channels gets routed to the subwoofer so that's the way to select speakers make sure you select them as small but if you've got big front speakers and you want them to actually produce some bass because you think it'll help in your system, then use your crossover frequency and go a little lower than 80 hertz. Send the lower than 80 hertz information to the front speakers and everything below that will go to the subwoofer. That's the way to do it. Okay, you've been listening to me now. Thankfully,